A top story this morning, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that federal prosecutors are looking into whether Morgan Stanley misled investors about mortgage derivatives it helped to design. Prosecutors say the CDO's dubbed dead president's deals were at times bet against by... You know what, I'm going to try and translate this for you. The prosecutors themselves aren't speaking, and what we understand is that Morgan Stanley placed bets against CDOs, possibly ones that it helped design. For reaction to this report, let's bring in Ron Geffner. He is a former SEC enforcement attorney, now a partner at Satis, partner, excuse me, at Satis and Goldberg. Ron, people see headlines like this, they want to jump to conclusions based on what you've read, what you know, what you understand, what can we conclude, divine, about Morgan Stanley its role and what federal prosecutors might be concerned about. Well, the, the Justice Department is looking at transactions that have gone on at Morgan Stanley currently, and I'm assuming this is going beyond Morgan Stanley as well, at multiple banks, whereby on one hand, they were selling instruments to investors, and on the other hand, they were shorting the very same instruments. And so the concern is a conflict of interest and possibly a failure to disclose. Okay, but hang uh, on a second, Ron. Before you go any further, uh, at least according to the journal's report, it wasn't Morgan Stanley that was selling these particular securities. They were underwritten and marketed by Citigroup and UBS. So is it not possible that Morgan Stanley was just the short money at the table and Citigroup and UBS were finding people on the long side in what we would have to assume was a synthetic CDO. Yeah, I mean, what I read was it said that Morgan Stanley arranged and marketed to investors pools of the CDOs, the collateralized debt obligations. So, um, it, it, listen, anything's possible. We don't have all the factual information, but what it, really what you should be looking at is this is indicative of a trend that the government, both the SEC and the, and the criminal side, have latched onto this theory of a uh, behavior that has gone on in, in many banks, and now they're one by one picking them off. Yeah, I mean, you just highlighted here perhaps this larger plan or on the SEC examining the mortgage bond business, at least this is according to a newspaper, of more than a dozen Wall Street firms. But the common link so far between Morgan and Goldman seems to be proper representations made to investors. What is the potential loophole here? Is that the investors were sophisticated investors? No, that the disclosures were actually fair and accurate and not misleading would be step one. Uh, this isn't something that you have, you know, we, we talk or theorize about rogue traders, rogue behavior within larger institutions. Something like this is harder where you're not going to have one individual who wrote a note or sent an email that misled people. Oftentimes, if there's something wrong going on, it's indicative of how the firm would conduct these practices or how people are looking at these practices at a new stage in life. In other words, you did something a year ago and a year later, it's deemed to be ethically, morally um, unpopular for the public. Uh, Ron, in the case of Goldman Sachs, it wasn't a big surprise that we found out the Justice Department was looking into their activities because the SEC had issued a Wells notice and then, of course, sued the firm. In Morgan Stanley's case, there is no Wells notice. In fact, the firm has denied, as of recently, uh, any knowledge of a Wells notice. So given the fact that the burden of proof is so much higher in criminal cases, isn't it kind of unusual that uh, a Justice Department probe would perhaps be advanced if we haven't seen or heard anything from the SEC yet? You, you said it in a very nice way. Yeah, you're actually accurate. It's highly unlikely that you would see criminal act actions filed with a higher burden of proof against a perpetrator and not a civil action first. However, there are times where it may happen, maybe in smaller instances, because one would hope while we expect that the SEC and the criminal authorities share information, they don't always, or one moves it at a faster track than the other, or, uh, and, or they're in competition with one another, which we saw that went on a couple of years ago, the IPO laddering cases. All right, Ron, we have to leave it there. We thank you so much. 